<clears throat> okay, so we can also um, ask a question like, what is the probability? So again, assuming I'm, I pick a random individual, one person out of these 665 people, what is the probability that the person I select is married or divorced, not remarried? OK, and how would we answer this? Well, we, yeah, we do 408 people are married, plus 84 people are divorced, not remarried, divided by 665, OK? So I have 408 plus 84, 492 divided by 665, and I get 0 0.7398, OK. Over here, I'm going to change this up. I'm going to say, what is the probability that the person I select is married or um, is in, uh, you know, completed less than high school. So this one's a tiny bit different, OK? So we're doing um, married or completed less than high school, OK? So we see 408 people married, OK? So as for married, we have 408 people. And less than high school, how many do we have? 125, OK? However, what am I doing? I am double counting this group of 70. Can you guys see that? OK, because 125 is these four numbers added together, and 408 are these three numbers added together. OK, so this 70 gets counted there twice. OK, so I want to subtract the overlap. OK, so minus the overlap. I don't need to subtract it twice. I just need to subtract it once. So I'm going to do 408 plus 125 minus 70. I get 463 divided by 665. And I get 0 0.6962. Okay, And so the general rule for OR events is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B. OK? So that's what we have here. I have 408 over 665. This is probability of married plus 125 over 665. This is probability of less than high school minus the overlap, probability of 
married and less than high school, minus 70 over 665. Okay, and because these all share a common denominator, I can combine them, and we get the same exact same thing, 463 over 665. Okay. Does that apply here for married and or divorced? Yes, it does. Okay, we did probability of married plus probability of divorce not remarried. But is there any overlap between married and divorce not remarried? There's no overlap. Okay, you cannot be both married and divorced not remarried. I don't think <laughs> so. Um, so this, the, the rule applies here in both cases, it's just that in this case, okay, the probability of married and divorce not remarried is zero, okay? So rule applies for both cases, or applies in all cases, really. Okay, but over here, the probability of uh, married and divorced, not remarried. I'm, I'm just going to abbreviate it divorced is equal to zero. Okay, divorced, not remarried. And so you don't see the subtraction there, okay? Because minus zero is does nothing to the number. Okay. Okay. Are there any questions here? Okay. I see some of us are still writing, so I'll just give you guys a minute. Is this, is this okay? Okay. I want to uh, talk about what we call conditional probabilities. So we're still using the same, um, same table here, continuing on. Okay. We have what we call conditional probabilities. And they look something like this probability of something given something, okay? Probability of A vertical bar B, we write we read this as probability of A given B. Okay? And this means, what is the probability of A if we know B uh, uh, has occurred, or has happened, or slash is true. Okay. So if we know given that b, okay, so it's probability of a given b, basically we're saying if we know b has happened or b is true, what's the probability of a? Okay? Probability of a given b. That's how we read this. Okay? So then um, just a quick quiz here, what would then probability of how do we say this? A. Yeah, probability of B given A. Okay.
And what does it mean here? We're asking, what is the probability of what? This other one up here, the one in blue up top. We're asking, what is the probability of blank if we know blank? Yeah, so what is the probability of B if we know A is true or A has happened? Okay? So basically just, you know, you can put whatever letters or whatever events in there, and that's, that's what we're doing. Okay? And so, so to calculate this, the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B. Okay. All right, and let's, uh, let's just, so over here, if I have probability of B given A, how would I calculate this? Probability of B given A would be equal to the probability of what over what? So on top, I would have probability of B and A. OK, so B and A and A and B are the same thing. So I can still write it as A and B, OK? Because B and A and A and B, those are identical, all right? Cookies and cream is the same thing as cream and cookies, OK? Although nobody says cream and cookies, it is the same thing with, as cookies and cream, OK? Mr. and Mrs. is the same as Mrs. and Mr. Okay. All right, so A and B, and what do I put on the bottom? Probability of A. A, exactly. Okay. So whatever comes after the vertical bar, whatever is given, goes in the denominator here. All right. Okay. All right, so let's look at what this means. Okay, so I'm going to write something like... Uh, I could say probability of less than high school <coughs> given uh, widow, widow, widower not remarried. Okay? So this is asking what is the probability. that what the person I select right you know completed less than high school blank if we know what if we know this person is a widow or widower. Is that okay? Okay, so then we do probability of A and B. So what's the probability of A and B? Or less than high school and widow, widow, or not remarried. So I'll just do less than high school and I'm just going to just abbreviate it uh, and widow divided by probability of widow. Okay, just so I don't have to keep writing not remarried. Okay, less than high school and widow is what? Uh, less than high school and widow would be how many? There's 28. 28 over 665, right? So that goes in the numerator. Is that okay? Okay, and then in the denominator, what goes in the denominator? Six, six, five. 
61, right? Probability of widow. What's the probability that the person I randomly select is a widow or widower, not remarried? 61 out of 665. Is that okay? Okay, and then so uh, um, this turns into 28 over 61. And I get 0 questions there? All right, so let's uh, let's try another one here. Okay, so we established probability of less than high school given widow, all right, is equal to 28 over 61 equal to 0 0.45901, or uh, just 0 0.4590. All right, I'm going to switch this around. Probability of widow, and again, that means widow not remarried, given less than high school. So what, what is this? So take a moment to figure that out. And I'm going to uh, pause the video again. Okay, uh, some of you guys have got it right, others of you do not. Uh, let's go over this, okay? So remember, the general form is probability of A given B is equal to what? Probability of A and B divided by probability of B, okay? so. Let's, uh, what do we have here? We're going to call widow A, and we're going to call less than high school B, all right? So on top, we would have probability of A and B. So that would be widow and less than high school. And on the bottom, we would have probability of B, probability of less than high school. So what is the probability of widow and less than high school? 28 over 665, right? That's what we have on top. What do we have on the bottom? Probability of less than high school. There's a total of 125 over 665. Is that okay? So we, you know, we we covered reading the two-way table in chapter one, or chapters one and two. Okay, so this is just reading the two-way table. Probability of less than high school is 125 over 665. So this becomes 28 over 125. And we punch that in. 28 divided by 125, 0 0.224. Is that okay? All right, so in your notes, you know, as you study this week, Make sure you know the difference between this and this, okay? If you get these mixed up on a test, you're in big trouble. All right, so make sure you know this versus this. Okay. And you, you can see that, you know, from the table, because we're, you know, it's always over 665, you can, if you have a table, you can kind of shortcut and just do 28 over 125, okay, if you don't want it keep doing divided by 665. But, you know, it doesn't hurt to have it in there. And, and when you simplify, you always get the right answer anyway. OK. Is that OK? We have um, the notion of independent events, OK? Um, let me just ask you this question here. What is the probability that a person I pick at random 
is widow, widower, not remarried. This would be what 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 would the fraction be here? I would do sixty one divided by six sixty five. Right, exactly. Good. And I get zero point zero nine one seven. Okay, so what do we see here? This line over here says if we know someone's education level is less than high school, the probability that this person is a widow or widower, not remarried, is 0.224. Okay, there's like a 22% chance. So if we know, if we know someone's education level is less than high school, 22% chance that this person is a widow or widower. Okay? On the other hand, if we don't know anything about a person, okay, if we know nothing about the person, the probability that this person is a widow, so given no other information, right, probability that just a randomly selected person is a widow or widower is about what? 9%. Okay? So knowing that someone has completed less than a high school education gives us a little bit more information. Okay, and so let's think about this, right? If you think of someone, you know, think of people in your life, do you know anyone who's, who did not complete high school? Okay, and you might know some people, all right? And chances are, if you think of all the people in your life that did not complete high school, chances are that they're probably older, in, the, in an older generation, right? It was, it was more common for people not to complete high school in, in the older generation, okay? And if you think about the older generation, they're also more likely to be widows or widowers. And so what we see here is that if we know someone's education level is less than high school, completing less than high school, it makes them more likely to be a widow or widower than if we didn't know anything about the person, okay? And so, so I'm going to write this down, okay? So we look at, I'm going to underline this number and underline this number, okay? And I'm going to write something like um, the probability that a person selected randomly is a widow or widower is 0 0.0917, okay? If we know someone did not complete high school, the probability he or she is a widow or widower is 0.224, okay? So this means, this means not completing high school is associated with a greater, um, greater probability of being a widow or widower. Okay. And it's not a cause and effect relationship. Okay, It's not that, oh, you didn't finish high school, and your spouse is more likely to die. It doesn't work that way. Okay, It's, uh, it's just a uh, Observational, <laughs> that would be good, well, I, w I would assume motivation to complete high school. Um, th this is just an observational thing. We're not, we can't, we're not saying one thing is causing the other. We're just saying, oh, what we're observing is that people who haven't completed high school, there's a higher chance that they are uh, widows or widowers. Okay.
and, and can you, does that make sense? The, the, these numbers reflected in the probabilities? Okay. And so the fact that there seems to be some kind of connection, okay, and it's not necessarily a cause and effect relationship, but just some kind of connection, this means that these two variables, widow and less than high school, are associated. Okay, or another word is that they are dependent. Okay, dependent is maybe not the best word that we can use because it kind of seems like there's a cause and effect relationship. Okay, but all we're just saying is that they are associated. Okay, if they're not associated, we say that they are independent of each other. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put this up here on the next slide. But I just want to make sure that this concept with the widow and the less than high school stuff. This makes sense, or you guys all understand it. I will take your lack of response as affirmation. Okay. All right. So, um, the events widow and less than high school. are said to be associated or dependent. Okay. This is in contrast to events that are independent. So with independent events, knowing one outcome, knowing the outcome of one event, has no uh, bearing on the outcome of another event. Okay. So if A and B are independent, Then, dot, 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 the probability of A given B. Okay, so the probability of A, if we know B has occurred, is just the probability of A. Okay? So the probability that A happens is just the probability that A happens. If B has happened, it's still just the probability that A has happened. Okay? And what else will be true? The probability of B given A will then be equal to what? B. Probability of B. Okay, not B, but the probability of B. Okay. So this is this is different from the widow and the less than high school case, right? Because we saw the probability of being a widow was around nine percent, and the probability of being a widow given less than high school wasn't the same, it was now different. It was 22% or 22 point, you know, 0.224, which is different. Okay. So let's let's just try a quick example here, okay? Um okay, so let's say uh Um, we have people with uh, black hair and we'll say not black hair. Okay, so we're just going to keep it simple. So you either have black hair or you don't. Okay, 
and we will say uh, you are either left-handed or not left-handed. Is that okay? All right, and so let's say we have uh, 12 people here and 72 people here. And we'll have 24 people here and 144 people here. I have a total of 84 and 168. 36 and 216 and 252. I hope I did my addition correctly. Okay. So I can ask you a question such as Is having black hair? independent of being left-handed. Okay, so before we even look at the numbers, what do you think the answer is? Okay, so to be independent, it means knowing the outcome of one thing tells us nothing about the other, okay? So if we know that someone has black hair, does that increase or decrease or has no effect on someone being left-handed? What do you guys think? It has no it, we would expect that it has no effect, right? And if someone is left-handed, do you think it has any effect on the probability of them having black hair? No, probably not, okay? So let's, uh, so we, we would check this, okay? And you just gotta arbitrarily label one of these to be uh, A and the other one to be B. So are we gonna call black hair A or are we gonna call black hair B? Okay, so we'll call bl having black hair as A and being left-handed will then be B, okay? So we're gonna check either of these, okay? So do you wanna check this one or do you wanna check this one? Probability of A given B equals probability of A or probability of B given A equals probability of B. Do you care? Let's just do this one, okay? So we're gonna say, what's the probability of A given B, okay? And we're gonna ask, is probability of A given B equal to probability of B, or I'm sorry, not B, of probability of A, okay? So we're just checking to see if this is true, okay? So what is the probability of A given B? This would be the probability of black hair given left-handed. Okay, what is the probability of having black hair given someone is left-handed? Not 12 and 12. Probability of black hair given left-handed. Okay, all right. Maybe we have to uh, further explore this. So what is probability of A given B? How do we calculate this? All right, so maybe I'll write over here probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B divided by the probability of B, right? Okay, so on top I would write probability of black hair and left-handed, what's that? 12 out of 252, okay, and on the bottom I would have probability of left-handed, which is 36 out of 252, okay? So this just becomes 12 out of, out of 36 or one-third. Is that okay? Okay, and we want to know, is this equal to, on the other side, is this equal to probability of A? So what's the probability of 
black hair. If I pick someone at random from this table, it's a probability this person has black hair. What's the fraction I would use? How many people have black hair? 84. Divided by how many people total? 252. And, uh, and if I did my addition and division correctly, this should be one third. Okay? So, so this number is equal to this number, and so that means they are independent or are not independent? They are independent, okay? So what we see is, you know, these two are equal, okay? So probability of A given B is indeed equal to the probability of A. So the events are independent. that okay I fear that I would do another example but I fear that we are running out of time so let me just cover the thing that I need to cover and then if we have time we'll do some examples at the end okay um, but you you'll, you'll see an example like this on your practice quiz and so study this page with the black hair and the left-handed okay and then um, and study this thing with the uh, uh, widow less than high school versus widow, okay? Because here we are essentially, in this thing, uh, what happened was probability of A given B is not the same as the probability of A, okay? 0.224 is not 0.0917, so they are not independent. They are associated. On the other hand, over here, probability of A given B is probability of A, so they are independent. Okay. Yes? So if, so if the probability, so there's two ways to check. If this and this are equal, they are independent. Okay, if they are not equal, they are not independent, okay? And then, um, and you can flip them around, and then this, you can check this. But if this is true, then this will also be true, okay? That's just, that's a mathematical rule. If this one works out, then this one will also work out. You don't have to check them both. You can just check one, but it, uh, it'll work out. Okay. okay. I'm going to talk about now, sequences of independent events. Okay, so sometimes we have independent events, and we uh, and we have kind of a string of them or a sequence. Okay, and so this is simple examples are a series of coin flips. Okay. A series of coin flips or a series of independent random games. Okay? So for example, what I mean by independent is that when you flip a coin, the next coin flip is not influenced by the outcome of the first coin flip. Okay? Coin flips are independent. The next coin flip, the probability that it lands heads or tails is point, point 0.5. Okay? Probability that it lands heads is point 0.5. It doesn't matter if the previous coin flips were tails or heads. It doesn't care. It's just a coin flip. The probability that it's going to land heads is point 0.5. Or if you go to um, Las Vegas, um, the simple games like roulette or craps or whatever it might be, those probabilities are not influenced by the previous outcomes, okay? It doesn't hold true for blackjack because they don't reshuffle the deck every time.
But if they did reshuffle every single time, then the probabilities would also be independent, but they don't. So, so then you have people trying to count cards. But as far as you know, the other games of chance, like roulette or um, or craps, or you know many of the other games, the uh, the probabilities are independent. Okay, each game, uh, whether you win or lose, has the same probability as before. Okay, and so when you have a sequence of events, okay, so let's say. A and B are independent. Then the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So example, okay. So A will be um, first coin flip lands heads, and B is second coin flip lands heads. Okay. What is the probability of flipping a coin twice and it lands heads both times? Okay, and so this is. For it to land heads both times, then the first coin flip must land heads, and the second coin flip must land heads. Okay, so this will be the probability of A and B. Okay, and we know that coin flips are independent, so this will be equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So what is the probability that the first coin flip lands heads? 0.5, right? So the probability of A is 0.5. What's the probability that the second coin flip lands heads? 0.5. Also 0.5, OK? So then the probability of A and B is 0.5 times 0.5, and we get 0.25. Or we can say the probability that both flips land heads is equal to 0.25. Okay. And this applies, you know, if you have four coin flips, you know, probability of A and B and C and D is the probability of A times the probability of B times the probability of C times the probability of D. You just keep the thing going on. OK? So let's try uh, a couple examples here. Is this, is this good with everybody? One second. One second, sure. So let's say um, you play a, what's a game that has a spinner? Twister. Twister. OK. So let's say you play Twister. And um, let's say the probability that it's a, what, left hand yellow. <laughs> is 1 out of 16, OK? All right, let's say you spin it 
three times. Okay, what is the probability you get left hand yellow all three times? Okay, so how would we answer this? So, yeah. Well, okay, so, so you know, we're going to spin it three times, okay? So the first spin has to end up being what? We have to get a sequence, okay? And so the first spin must be left hand yellow, right? I'm going to just abbreviate it LHY. The second spin must be what? Same thing, left hand yellow. And the third spin must be left hand yellow, okay? And so what's the probability that this sequence happens? Well, I do the, the probability is then going to be what? 1 over out of 16. The next one, what's the probability of this? 1 out of 16 and 1 out of 16. So I have to multiply all of these together and I get 1 out of 16 Um, you know, time, you know, so I'm going to do 0 0.0625 times 0 0.0625 times 0 0.0625. Okay, and so I get a very small number, or 0 0.0625 raised to the third power. And I get 0 0.000. zero, zero Two four four, one. Okay, so when I say keep four decimals, I'm talking about four four things that aren't zeros. Okay, so it's a very very unlikely thing to happen, right? It's very unlikely. Two out of ten thousand times you'll get left hand yellow three times in a row. Okay. Okay. Uh, what is the probability that um, you get left hand yellow zero times uh, out of the three spins? Okay, how would we answer this? Okay, well, if the probability of getting left hand yellow is 1 out of 16, or 0 0.0625, what's the probability of not getting left hand yellow? No. Yeah, so probability of not getting left hand yellow will be 1 minus 1 16th, which is 15 out of 16, or 0.9375. Is that good? OK. So if we're saying, what's the probability that you get left hand yellow 0 times out of the three spins, that means our first spin must be what? So if I label these, one, the first spin, second spin, and third spin, the first spin must be not left hand yellow. The second spin must also be not left hand yellow. And the third spin must also be not left hand yellow. All right? And so this is going to be 0 0.9375 times 0 0.9375 times 0 0.9375. Is that OK with everybody? OK? So that's 0.9375 raised to the third power. So I'm going to do 0.9375 raised to the third power. And I get 0 0.82397. 0 0.82, 
0.3397 or 0.824, something around there. Is that okay? All right. Let's try another question. What is the probability that you get left hand yellow on the first spin and something else on the other two spins? Okay, so the first spin must be what? First spin must be left hand yellow. Second spin must be not left hand yellow. And the third spin must be not left hand yellow. Okay, so what's the probability for the first spin? 116. Yeah, 116 or 0 0.0625. And then the other ones will be? 0.9375 times 0.9375. Is this okay? So I'm going to just multiply these all together. 0.0625 times 0.9375 times 0.9375 times 0.9375 times 0.9375 and I get 0.05493. That's not the, yeah, uh, and that's what I'm asking though. I'm asking what's the probability that you get on the first spin left hand yellow and not left hand yellow on the next two spins? That's what I'm asking. This is a different question from what you're saying. What you're asking is I spin it three times and what's the probability I get left hand yellow one out of the three times? Right, but if you switch the numbers around, it doesn't matter what the order. So it would be the same as you said. What's the probability to get left hand yellow the second time? Yes, that's correct. So if okay, so we're we're talking about different things. This is actually covered next week in the binomial. But um, if I said, what's the probability that I get not left hand yellow the first spin, left hand yellow the second spin, and not left hand yellow the third spin? Um, my answer would be the same. Point oh five four nine three. Okay, but that's that's technically a different sequence than what I've asked here. Okay. All right, let's try another one. And this is the, uh, in my opinion, well, I don't know. Maybe the one that requires the most mental thought. Okay. What is the probability that after three spins, I get left hand yellow at least one time. Okay? So here's this thing at least one time. Okay? So let me just list off outcomes. <coughs> after three spins. Okay? Outcomes after three spins, I can see left hand yellow. What's the most number of spins that uh, left hand yellows can I see? I can see left hand yellow up to what? Three times, right? Okay? It's also possible to see it how many times? two times, one time, and zero times. OK? 
can I see left hand yellow any other number of times? This is it, right? Okay, so what does it mean to be at least, to get at least one left hand yellow? Does get, seeing left hand yellow three times count? Yes. What about two times? Yes. One time? Yes. yes. Zero times? No. 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 Okay. So, there are a few ways I can approach this. I can try to calculate the probability of getting left hand yellow one time, and then figuring out the probability of getting left hand yellow two times, and getting the probability of getting left hand yellow three times, okay? But that's not, it's going to be a lot of work to do that. So the other way I can do it is just find the probability of getting left hand yellow zero times, and then I know that everything has to add up to what? One, right? Because this is all possible outcomes. So I can do one minus zero times, and that will give me the probability of left hand yellow at least one time. Okay, so I'm going to write that down, okay? So the probability of getting uh, left hand yellow at least one time is equal to one minus the probability of left hand yellow zero times. Okay. Let's think about that for a second. I just want to make sure that that makes sense. Okay. So the probability of getting something at least one time is the complement of getting it zero times. Okay. Because if you think about it, there's only two possibilities something has happened at least once or it has never happened. That's the only anything that you can think of. Whatever it is, it's either never happened or it's happened at least one time. Okay? That's it. There's no other possibilities. Okay? It either never happens or it happens at least one time. And so, to get the probability of left hand yellow at least three, uh, at least one time, I just do one minus the probability of left hand yellow zero times. What is the probability of getting left hand yellow zero times? <coughs> Did we already answer this? No, it's not zero. Okay, if you flip back, what is the probability that you get left hand yellow zero times out of the three spins? We are so quick to forget, aren't we? Okay. So you have already answered this question, okay? And we found the answer to be 0.82937. Now, how do we do that? We said you had to get not left hand yellow, not left hand yellow, not left hand yellow. So even if I didn't ask this question earlier, you can still get this, okay? And we know this answer is 0.82397, okay? So from the previous page, 0.82937, okay, from previous page. Okay, so I get 1 minus this. So the probability of left hand yellow at least one time is equal to 1 minus 0.82937, and we have 0.17063. Is that okay? I'll let you guys finish that. All right, it's 9.55. I can neither do one example or I can just let you guys home and you s promise me that you'll study. One example. One example, okay. So someone, someone has spoken and nobody. <laughs> All right, so we'll just do one more example here, okay? And, uh, and we'll do one more example. All right, uh, did everybody get this down? Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll try one example here. Okay, so we'll do... Um, uh, I have, um, I don't know, a sp sp I've got a, a bucket here, okay? And in the bucket we have little uh, marbles, okay? And we will say the probability of drawing a, um, a white marble 
is 0.2. Okay? Okay, so we're going to draw four marbles. Okay? And I'm going to ask, what is the probability? So we'll do um, two examples. What is the probability of drawing? So every time you draw, you're going to you draw it and you put it back so the probability doesn't change, okay? Drawing four marbles and zero of them are white. Okay, and then I will ask what is the probability of getting at least one white marble after four draws. Okay, so draw with replacement. I'm just putting this up there. You don't have to write this down. So probability. Okay, so I'll give you guys two minutes to uh, figure out these answers. And then we'll go over the answers and then you guys can go home. So we'll, uh, I'm gonna pause the video here if you're on YouTube. Okay, so if the probability of drawing a white marble is 0.2, what's the probability of not white? Right, 0.8, okay? So if you draw four marbles and you want zero of them to be white, the sequence has to be not white, not white, not white, not white, okay? So what's the probability of getting not white? It's gonna be 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.8, okay? Or 0 0.8 to the fourth power. And that's 0 0.4096. Okay, so that's our first answer, 0 0.4096. What's the probability of getting at least one white marble after four draws? Okay, so this is probability of getting at least one is going to be one minus the probability of getting zero white marbles. Okay, what's the probability of getting zero white marbles? 0 0.4096. We, we just solved that. So the probability of at least one will be equal to 1 minus 0 0.4096 and we get 0.5904. Okay, so that concludes our lesson for the day. Uh, you guys have a quiz next week. We'll see you, uh, see you next week.